Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how we can reduce the loss of biodiversity. Over the last few videos, we've been looking at how human actions can reduce the Earth's biodiversity. And remember that biodiversity is the variety of all the different species of organisms on Earth. As we've seen, a rich biodiversity is really important, as it helps to make ecosystems more stable. So in this video, we're looking at how we can reduce the negative effects of humans on biodiversity. The first way is by using breeding programs for endangered species. I'm showing you here a Sumatran tiger. Only a few hundred Sumatran tigers remain in the wild. So to increase the numbers, many zoos take part in a breeding program, lending their Sumatran tigers to other zoos in the hope that they'll breed. Many other endangered species are also part of breeding programs. As we've seen before, the destruction of habitats can reduce biodiversity. I'm showing you here an area of wetland. Wetlands like this have a very high level of biodiversity. Unfortunately, over the last century, many wetlands have been drained to grow crops. However, in recent years, large areas of wetland have been protected, so they can never be drained. And in some parts of the country, wetlands that had been drained are now being reflooded. So the protection and regeneration of rare habitats is important for preserving biodiversity. Now, one area where biodiversity is very low is on farms such as this one. Farmers tend to grow large fields containing one type of crop. This means that we find very few species of plants and animals in fields such as this one. To help with this, many farmers leave a strip of land around fields where wild plants and animals can live. These are called field margins. Farmers also plant hedgerows between fields, and I'm showing you a hedgerow here. Lots of different species of plants and animals live in hedgerows. Both field margins and hedgerows help to preserve biodiversity on farms. Governments can also play a really important role in maintaining biodiversity. In previous videos, we've seen that habitats are being destroyed by both deforestation and by global warming. Many governments have taken steps to reduce deforestation. For example, the Brazilian government has established national parks in an attempt to protect the Amazon rainforest. Governments around the world are also taking action to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. For example, in the UK, a very large proportion of our electricity is now generated by renewable methods such as wind power. Increasing the use of renewables will reduce global warming. So by reducing deforestation and carbon dioxide emissions, governments can reduce the loss of biodiversity. OK, now individuals can also make a contribution, and one good way is by recycling waste materials. Remember that a lot of waste is simply dumped into landfills, and this destroys habitats for plants and animals. If we recycle, then less waste ends up in landfills. This means that fewer habitats are destroyed, and this has a positive effect on biodiversity. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on reducing the loss of biodiversity in my Vision workbook. And you can get that by clicking on the link above. 